Joining me now is senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, Dr. Ariel Cohen. Dr. Cohen, welcome to the show. Pleasure. Uh, you recently said, doctor, that the Balkans are ground zero for the European refugee crisis. Uh, what did you mean by that? I mean that if we don't support our friends in the Balkans, if we don't uh, give them assistance, and if they don't care of business themselves, uh, it will be a disaster for Europe. For example, the country of Macedonia, an absolutely an anchor uh, in the Balkans because the refugees are going through it. One million refugees went through the country of 2.5 million. It's like 150 million refugees would be going through America. And that country uh, is being inundated on purpose uh, by the refugees that its neighbor, Greece, allows them to break through the border. And the other problem in Macedonia is that it's being destabilized by its own socialist opposition. Surprise. So uh, Zoran Zaev, the leader of the opposition, is running away from the elections. Instead of having the elections, they are trying to sabotage the elections and boycott the elections. This is not in the American interest. This is not in European interest. And this is not in Macedonian interest. We need Greece to support Macedonia, not to quibble with it about its name. Greece wants the monopoly on Macedonia name for itself. It's, it's like a kid. Right, and, and, and the problem with this many migrants going through Mace, uh, Macedonia, and correct me if I'm wrong here, doctor, it's twofold. It's both about uh, the cultural shift that when that high of a number of people come into a country, they can't help but change uh, the culture, the society. But it's also an issue of recruitment. There are radical Islamists that are infiltrating here like they are in other European countries uh, that are trying to radicalize. They're trying to spread their propaganda. They're trying to essentially take hold of that area of the country, correct? Absolutely, Liz. And when I was in Germany last fall, very senior officials told me that they abandoned all controls uh, of the people who are flooding into Germany. The same thing in Sweden, Belgium, France, you name it. And this is why the U.S. and the EU need to work together and work together with the governments in the Balkans, like Greece, like Albania, Macedonia, Serbia, etc., and shore them up, give them assistance to filter the refugee flow so that, uh, for example, economic migrants will not come to Europe if they don't deserve it. There are genuine refugees that the international law recognizes them as refugees from conflict or victims of persecution. On the other hand, people from Bangladesh or Iran or Africa do not qualify to be the refugees. They're economic migrants, and we need uh, the controls along the Mediterranean and especially in the Balkans because they all come to Greece and then they walk on foot from Greece into Macedonia, into Albania and other countries. And if they don't filter that flow, if they don't find out where's the ISIS people, where the Al Qaeda people, we are all going to suffer, first of all in Europe, but also in the United States. All right, doctor, clarify something for us. You mentioned economic migrants versus uh, true refugees. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that, that a person who um, is not a victim of persecution or uh, of war uh, deserves to apply uh, through the acceptable channels to emigrate uh, out of their own country to another country but it may take a long time. They need to be screened. Even the refugees from wars need to be screened. And if governments uh, that are weak, uh, small countries like Albania, Macedonia, Serbia, etc., do not have the resources, we don't help them with computers, with biometrics, etc. We don't help them to deal with these refugees. And if these countries are allowed to fall apart because of their internal um, internal conflicts like we're seeing in some places, including a country like Macedonia, also the economic mess in Greece. Uh, this is not in our interest. We need, for example, in Macedonia, when they have elections scheduled for June 5th, that these elections go through on time as it was promised. Uh, in other countries, if they need to boost up their border controls, like Greeks. Uh, Greeks have one of the biggest navies uh, in NATO, they're a NATO member, 
but they did not prevent these refugees. This over a million of refugees in one year flooding into Europe. And then among these refugees, you have Islamists and you have many, many economic migrants that under the international law do not deserve political asylum. Sorry to say All that, right, Doctor, let but me, the let Europeans me ask you need... Let me, let me ask you sure. this then. So this sounds like there's a pretty high number of economic migrants uh, in with the refugees that are trying to escape true war-torn countries, to true war-torn situations. Are these Balkan states, are they not able, do they not have the resources to take care of this problem themselves, or are they just choosing not to? Oh, absolutely they do not have um, the resources. Um, some of these countries are very poor, like Albania, uh, one of the poorest countries in Europe. Uh, Greeks have a tremendous economic crisis that they brought upon themselves. But instead of cooperating together, and instead of the EU and us giving them all the assistance they need to have a system to protect the border, um, they do not do that. They squabble. The Greeks are attacking Macedonia over the name. The Macedonian opposition is attacking the government. The Serbs and the Croats and Bosnia-Herzegovina still did not fully sort out uh, the results of the war. Uh, Kosovo is independent. So these people do not have a big tradition of working together. But we saw in the past, every big crisis in the Balkans leads to a huge European crisis, like we had in World War I and like we had when Yugoslavia fell apart. So they need to get their act together. They need to have the system uh, to screen the refugees. They cannot absorb millions of economic refugees from Africa, from Indonesia, from Bangladesh, uh, Afghanistan, etc. And they need to get their political act together. If they have elections, they need to have elections. Why doesn't the European Union step in? Because this all makes sense. Like you said, history has shown us, and we know what happens when you ignore history. History has shown us that it's very important to look uh, at conflict in that region. Why isn't the European Union doing anything? It's not doing enough. Um, some of the governments, like the Austrians, are helping to get uh, border patrols together. But we're literally talking about people sending 10 policemen or 15 trainers. This is not enough. This is an emergency. And the problem in Europe is Europe was at peace for, since 1945, since the defeat of Hitler's Germany. And this was under the American security umbrella. They um, benefited from our defense, from NATO. We are paying too much for their defenses. They did not get their act together. And when the political instability or economic instability happens, they need to be proactive. They needed to prevent the economic crisis in Greece. They need to force the Greeks to stop squabbling with Macedonia and to start stopping these refugees, not to send them to the borders and allow them to break the border controls. Um, they need to, Europeans uh, need to enforce uh, the political uh, democratic procedures in these countries, uh, if it's in Albania or it's in Serbia or it's Macedonia that has elections on June 5th. They need to get their act together. And unfortunately, because of 28 members, remember, it's a confederation. It's not a federal right. state. And it's, it's, it's not, hard, it's Europe hard to is expect. not a state. Right. It's hard to expect the European Union, which does have uh, power over so many of those states, it's hard to expect the European Union to do anything when these individual countries, when the individual leaders in Europe are opening their borders, welcoming these refugees, and not doing anything themselves about the problem. They just want to pass it on to someone else to deal with. Uh, Dr. Cohen, it was great to talk to you. Mm -hmm. We are out of time for today, but I appreciate you coming on. Coming up next, small business owners are starting to make their pick for president. Who are they choosing? Karen Merrick is here in a minute.